Um, I'll show you a quick example. I'll close all those scenes and create a new scene uh, in which I'll just create the, the figure mesh. And I'll turn this one into a PFT volume. And this PFT volume, as you know, will have by default very few particles in the viewport. I can go here to about 10 centimeters. So this is a very, very rough representation of the actual figure. And uh, if I wanted to produce more particles, obviously I can and the the time that would happen. But what I'm going to do now is I'll add a quick to attack, recapitulate. And uh, by default, it defaults to few radius of 10 centimeters. This is pretty much the spacing that we currently have between the particles anyway. And I have the option to enable in the viewport. I'll set the number of particles per subdivision to one, enable in the viewport, and you'll see that we're getting random particles distributed in each voxel where we have a particle around the particles within 10 centimeters, we see new particles. Here it is without, and here it's with them. And then I can continue increasing the number of particles per voxel and make it more solid. At some point when I'm here at about 10 particles per voxel, um, I get a relatively solid look from the data that, uh, really low resolution data that I got there. I can also increase the number of subdivisions that will create subvoxels and then fuel or the particles. And in order to visualize what's happening, I'm going to copy after the subdivision, uh, it was done after the repopulation, I'll move this behind and I'll switch it from uh, the copy from normals into colors. And this will visualize what is actually happening uh, when we populate new particles. New normals are being generated based on more or less the surface of this blob mesh. I would say it looks like um, almost like we created metaballs around the original particles. And uh, then we uh, calculate the normals approximately from the surface of this uh, blob mesh around. We don't really create a blob mesh, but the data structure is very similar. We create a grid, put the particles there, figure out uh, how they affect based on this radius. So this value here defines both the size of the grid. Right now, uh, the size of the grid is 10, but it's subdivided one, so it's five centimeters grid. And in uh, each one of those voxels, we are seeding one or more particles, in this case, 10 particles, which will be within 10 centimeters from our original particle. And uh, we can also fall off the density of a distance uh, so it's linearly falling off and slowly uh, fading as the particles are moving away from their source particle. And with this method, you can create, uh, uh, as uh, I've shown during the NAB demo, for example, you can take a fluid simulation and increase the number of particles there uh, effectively and create something that looks like it was fluid simulation. Uh, the other thing that we can do is, if you remember the uh, uh, PAT loader that we were looking at here, if we go to any of those frames uh, where we have the actual PAT loader and we'll disable the emitter, if I wanted to repopulate these particles, I already have the repopulate set to, uh, let's say, one particle here, 10 radius. I'll enable the repopulate, enable it in the viewport. And we start actually seeing, because I had one subdivision, here, around each particle, right now we are creating a radius of 10 and we are putting particles around. If I go down to a radius of 1, around each particle, it will take a little bit longer because the grid got much more dense. I had to, in memory, it created a much bigger grid. And now around each one of the original particles, which are shown as velocities, I'll show them as small dots or large dots. Um, if I zoom in, and take a look, um, actually creating small balls of particles around each original particle. Here it is without. There is one particle here, and here within one centimeter radius around it, we are now generating new particles which are distributed there. And of course, when I start increasing this, if I go up to radius of five, then the distribution, and I'll add 10 particles to each voxel, so we have bigger blobs. We are now creating much larger spheres and when they come together, they start merging instead of overlapping. You don't have duplication of particles from the one sphere and the other. They merge just like a uh, metaball would do. So this is the, the general principle of how the repopulation actually works. We're seeding new particles on a grid uh, and distributing all the data. You saw when I was showing the velocities that uh, the actual velocities survived the process. And any channel, if I had colors, for example, underneath, 
uh, and the ones that show, um, for example, colorized by the velocity and then propagate that color through the particles, I can do that. Um, so I, I just have to uh, to tell it that uh, we'll be using the velocity as the color source and um, the original particles. Now the blobs, each particle that was repopulated gets the color from the particle that it stems from. And wherever there are multiple particles, there will be a blending of the color of the two neighbor particles. So these are not the colors generated uh, after the repopulation. These are the colors propagated from the gradient to the repopulation. And any channel that exists in the original particles will be propagated. The only major difference is that the density channel uh, will be populated, uh, like actually transferred differently, because we have to deal with what is the value of the particle that was the source here, how many particles are we creating, and in what voxel space. And that means each particle will get a fraction of the density of the original particle. And if the fall off is on, it will also fall off the density at the distance. So it's actually dealing with distributing the wealth of density of the original particle systems to the new particle to the new particles um, correctly, and it looks always very small. 